hope you added some awesome records to your collection in the past year. I know I did, and I'm going to showcase a few of them on this episode of Talking About Records. My name is G.I. Sanders from NTX Vinyl, a small chain of independent record shops in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. If you're not local but you are in the U.S., you can shop online at ntxvinyl.com and would love it if you'd subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Follow us across social media on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. At NTX Vinyl is the handle. It is the end of 2022. We are closing in on the final few days and as always, it's fun to take a look back at the past year, figure out what are some of the coolest, rarest, and most unique items that I added to my collection. So I went back through uh, my inventory or my collection in Discogs to see what did I actually add, and I added some pretty cool stuff. I picked out just a handful, I think 10 or 12 items um, of records that I either found uh, digging uh, through collections, maybe I bought them at record stores, got them online, a variety of different places. So uh, I just figured I'd go through and give you a little bit of recap of some of my best finds and of course would love to, uh, to hear what you discovered this year. First and foremost, I picked out a couple uh, 12 inch singles, which I don't have a lot of 12 inch singles in my collection. I really only collect them from a handful of artists that I really, really love. Um, but these two in particular, are really, uh, really pretty cool and unique. This is uh, Smells Like Teen Spirit, 12 inch. I just kind of had to have this one. Um, a really cool 12 inch single, obviously Teen Spirit on the A side, and then you've got Drain You, and even in his use of previously unreleased song on the flip side. This is one of those, like I mentioned, I don't collect a lot, but when it's an iconic song like this and an iconic cover, I remember having this CD single uh, back when this first came out in 1991. Such a such an important song uh, as, as it pertains to my life and alternative rock in general. So that was a, a really cool addition to the collection. The other one I added is this really unique Allison Chains Them Bones single. This is uh, really cool because it's a die cut sleeve as you can see, and a blue vinyl is Them Bones, We Die Young, Got Me Wrong, and Am I Inside. So kind of a little mini EP. Uh, they're numbered out of 5,000, I believe. Yeah, strictly limited edition, individually numbered, four-track blue vinyl. It doesn't say out of 5,000, but my number on the back is 4,498. So I don't know, they could have done five or 10,000. So again, just a, a pretty unique single, not one uh, that ever came out in the United States at all. And being a huge Allison Chains fan, Allison Chains fan, that was a no-brainer. All right, next up. This is a really cool Japanese pressing of Led Zeppelin III. Uh, this is from 1971. I got this from a friend, actually bought it from them all online. I don't have a lot of Japanese pressings at all. Uh, just starting to kind of get into that. I love the Obi strip. It gives it a really unique uh, visual, of course, and the sound is great. They really do sound good. I don't have a ton, but the ones I do have, including this one, sound fantastic. So I was excited to add this to the collection, and I kind of picked it out because for me, this is in a lot of ways, a starting point, because I have a feeling I'll probably start going down this route a little more as far as the Japanese pressings are concerned. Um, uh, again, because they're unique, uh, they're certainly rare in the United States, and the quality is very high. So, And I love Led Zeppelin III. To me, it's uh, one of those timeless albums uh, in the Zeppelin catalog that melds kind of their bluesier earlier days with kind of the acoustic flair of what they got into on some of the later albums. So Zeppelin III um, is a must own. And it's one of, not this particular copy, but my normal US copy. It's one of the first records I ever bought um, back way back in the day when I was a teenager. So Zeppelin III holds a special place for me. All right, next up. This is Undertow by Tool. This is a promotional copy on gray vinyl that I was super excited. I actually won this in an online raffle 
Um, I don't participate in those a lot, at least I haven't in a few years because I really don't have that great of luck, but I was super excited to win this one. Again, promo copy. Um, this is the original artwork. You may know the, uh, the reissue artwork uh, that was on the CD and, and on the LP with the red, uh, the red artwork, but this, was, uh, this is the original, so it's cool to have the original artwork, cool to have a prom promotional copy on the gray vinyl. I believe this comes on gray um, and maybe clear vinyl are the only two that came out in 92 when this was originally released, so uh, 92, 93. So awesome record by Tool. Um, I, uh, I didn't see the band on this tour. I started uh, started following them um, on the Anima tour. Saw them a ton of times on that tour. Undertow. I uh, wish I could go back in these days when uh, when Maynard was actually in the on the front of the stage with lights on and you could actually see him. Uh, totally different band back then, but uh, I do appreciate Undertow. Such a great record. Next on the list, this is one I forgot about, honestly. This is an original pressing of There Is Nothing Left to Lose by the Foo Fighters. Uh, one of, in my opinion, kind of an underrated album from the band. It, it has big singles on it, like Learn to Fly, uh, Breakout, I think is a pretty big single, but I actually love the album tracks on this one so much more. Stacked Actors is fantastic. Um, Aurora, Next Year, Ain't It the Life. Some of the uh, kind of softer Foo Fighters song, this was uh, pretty much... Uh, written and recorded as just a three-piece, uh, which is unique for the band. Um, and they uh, they, they uh, recorded this, I think, in their basement studio that they built in Virginia. So love this record. Was very excited to find an original pressing of it. It actually does come with the uh, the tattoo as well, which is pretty cool. Super cool album. Glad, I, glad to get an original copy of that one. All right. I've actually got two albums from Neil Young. One of them has been on my want list for a long, long time. One of them I had no idea. Um, I was going to come across this one. It's been on my want list for a long time. This is Neil Young Unplugged. I'm pretty sure I've included this one in other videos because it was it's one I've been after for a long time. Never released in the United States. Um, it is rumored that Neil is working on a reissue of this one. Um, long awaited. I won't be surprised if it comes. That being said, Neil releases so much music who knows when he'll get to it but uh this is from that era of harvest moon which is a fantastic neil young record uh came out originally in 1993 features uh some of his classics like like a hurricane mr soul um and then you've got long may you run but then you've got a ton of stuff from that the harvest moon era um like um Let's see, the title track, Unknown Legend, um, from Hake to Hendrix, and you've got other stuff like Needle and the Damage Done and Helpless. So one of those iconic MTV Unplugged performances. I'm so happy to add this to the collection on vinyl. The other Neil Young record, which shocked me, was this one right here. This is Neil's first record, and first of all, it's unique because it does not have his name on the cover, which is unique in itself. If you find one uh, without the name, that means it's a first pressing or a very early pressing. This one is unique because it's not only the uh, the one without the name, but it's also a white label promotional copy. So the final white label promo of Neil's first ever record from 1969. Could not believe it. It was mixed up in a collection of a whole bunch of like DJ singles from the 80s that was mostly like disco stuff. Most of it got donated because it was in terrible condition. I have no idea how this one ended up there, but I'm certainly glad it did. I was super excited. That was a very good day digging through records at my storage unit. So love this record. It will definitely stay in my collection. Next on the list, going to stay more with uh, early 90s rock original pressings. This is Nine Inch Nails Broken. Um, a fantastic record. This was the bridge between Pretty Hate Machine and Downward Spiral. Um, you've got Wish, Last, Help Me, I'm in Hell, Happiness and Slavery, Gave Up. This also comes with the 7-inch single uh, with a couple of bonus tracks on it. Once again, just not one I had an original pressing of, so I was super excited to have this one in the collection. Um, I think I bought this from an online seller, someone I trusted if I remember correctly. So, uh, so again, a uh, very cool piece. Next up, this is Mad Season in the Seattle Symphony, a very unique LP, features uh, Chris Cornell on vocals, rest in peace. You've also got McCready and Cameron from Pearl Jam. You've got Barrett Martin from uh, the original uh, Mad Season record. Uh, Jeff Amitz on this, Stone Gossard, Sean Kinney, Duff McKagan. It's a who's who. This was a uh, live performance they did at the, uh, I believe at the Benaroyal Hall. 
Yeah, I've been in Royal Hall January 30th, 2015. Very hard record to come by on vinyl. This is the, uh, the red and black splatter edition that I believe was only sold via Pearl Jam's 10 Club. Fantastic performance of a bunch of great tracks from not only Mad Season, but the Temple of the Dog era. Um, absolutely cherish this record, and it's a, it's a pretty rare bird, a couple hundred dollar record if you can find one. I got a great deal on this one, again, from an online seller. I think I traded a bunch of stuff in addition to some cash to be able to add this one to the collection. Um, definitely, uh, definitely a must listen if you're a fan of uh, any of those musicians or bands that I named. All right, I've got a couple box sets I've added as well. I try not to add too many box sets because they're so bulky, but sometimes they're just so cool. Uh, this one is one that I was excited to add, and this is Nora Jones, uh, the deluxe 20th anniversary super deluxe edition of Come Away With Me. I absolutely love this set. Um, the gold in here is not only the audio quality, which is fantastic, but the demo sessions, which are included in here, are just great. It's really neat to hear those initial demos, what the album um, maybe would have been. And luckily, they went back to the drawing board and kind of re-recorded uh, with some different musicians. The songs are still great, but to hear those early versions, kind of those sketches that Nora had in place with her and her songwriters uh, and the musicians are really cool. So it's great to have those. Um, that's the type of stuff that will make me splurge for a box says when you get the, uh, the kind of demos and unreleased stuff that I'd never heard before. So love this record. And I think the demos, um, really shine on this box set. Next up, another box that I just added. This is Echo of Miles by Soundgarden. So this is a six LP picture disc box set. I, I own very few picture discs because audio quality just is not up to par with normal uh, vinyl LPs. But this is only released on picture disc and it, it actually does sound pretty good. There's a few spots in it where I thought it was a little noisy, but it's almost all B-sides, outtakes and covers, which is super fun. I own, I would say probably 75% of it on other Soundgarden LPs, but there was a uh, 25% of there that I just had to have. There's some instrumental demos and early outtakes on this. That this is the only place you can find it. And it's got super, uh, super cool covers from a variety of their 12 inch singles, as well as stuff they uh, contributed to uh, soundtracks and B-sides. So um, if you're a Soundgarden fan, this is definitely uh, one to add to the list. Echo of Miles, again, six LP picture disc box set. Um, really great listen. It makes for a, a great day to run through that. Last but not least, I acquired a couple box sets this year that I had no plans of acquiring. And I'd kind of written them off just because the price just gotten too high. But they fell in my lap and sometimes you can't pass up a great deal. So I got two box sets and they're very heavy, so I'm not gonna open them up. This is the Beatles 2014 catalog in stereo, which is a fantastic set. And I also added the Beatles in mono. Not ones that I necessarily had on the list. And like I said, didn't ever really think I would be able to acquire these. But when a great deal comes along, you gotta jump on it. I have had a blast going through and listening to uh, the mono and the stereo mixes. Do I need another Beatles box set? I mean, I have deluxe editions of, you know, the White Album and Abbey Road and Let It Be and Revolver. And then I've got vintage copies of their entire catalog and then some. But these copies are just so superb in regards to audio fidelity. A great listen um, and something I'll cherish and, and take to the grave with me, honestly. They are really well done sets and I was incredibly grateful to the, uh, to the customer that came to me and, uh, and offered them up. That's one of, the, one of the perks of owning a record store is that people know you collect and so I have a lot of people come to me a lot of times who offer me stuff like this. This is a, definitely a highlight of the year was those Beatles box sets and it just came recently. So it was a great way to cap off a fantastic year of collecting. I added um, probably a couple hundred LPs to my collection. I'm getting to that point now to where I'm definitely cherry picking and looking more for quality versus quantity. I have the vast majority of what I wanna own personally. Um, you know, I say that now, <laughs> but as you get into other genres like jazz or blues, R&B and soul and funk, like those are some areas that I'm collecting more so than on the rock front. 
um, these are some unique LPs that I, I pick off along the way because most of them are kind of higher end collectible, not in print. Certainly a lot of them not even available in the US or were never made available. So those are the types of things that I kind of go after. So there you go. There's a quick recap of some of the best of the best from my year of collecting. I would love to hear from you about an LP or a few records that you checked off your want list. Maybe it was uh, something you were digging for or something that just fell in your lap. Um, those are always the funnest scenarios. So have a great rest of the year. We will be back in the new year uh, with plenty of more talking about records, plenty of more vinyl for sale. Have a great break and we'll see you in 2023.